on this study of fools. 189 verses. 199 times does the Bible say from Genesis to Revelation the subject of fool. Fool 66 times. Foolish 52 times. Foolishly 12 times. Foolishness 20. Fools 42. And fools as a possession seven times. And there are good fools, and there are bad fools in the Bible. And with the grace and mercy of God, and Lord willing, I like to go through each one of these fools in the Bible. Whether we should be or we should not be. I ask that you pray for us as we go through this. Now this lesson that we do is not for you to skip church. And not being a church. These lessons are extra. They can be used on your time to learn, to pass out, to give to your friends, to download, use, get them out, please. But on this full study, remarkably, we're going to study something. A Bible subject, and in most cases, a fool is somebody you do not want to be. We want to be what God wants us to be. And prayerfully, this lesson will have you to do right. Pray for us and help us get this word out. Okay, continue with our study about fools, how not to be one, and what the Bible has to say about fools, foolishness. We come up to the fourth place, Deuteronomy 32, 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me, provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. So we got a foolish nation to provoke Israel. So when we look at fools, foolishness, as you see here, foolish, it's not just an ind individual, it can be a nation, a group of people. So nation, so people as a group can be fools. Here the subject are the Gentiles, a people without God. Today it would be the nations that receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, the Jewish Messiah. There are three groups of people in the Bible today there are the nation of Israel Abraham Isaac and Jacob there are those who are not of Abraham Isaac and Jacob they would be everybody Ishmaelites uh, American German Chinese all of them and then the third class of people would be those that are the children of God by the Holy Spirit, by their faith and belief in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. So we're looking at a nation, Gentiles, in the contents of Deuteronomy 32, and they're foolish. And the book of Acts, the Jews were angry at the apostles, the disciples, and Christians for preaching Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Now we see Ephesians 4, 17 to 20. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, 
that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. In the vanity of their mind, emptiness, no sense, no use. Having their understanding darkened, no light. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Ignorant, no knowledge, unknown. Because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness. Sinners, wicked, outside of God, to work all in cleanness, with greediness. But ye have not so learned in Christ. So Paul to the Ephesians, hey listen, this is what you were. And now you've been taught, now that you've been saved, now that you have scripture and doctrine. There should be a difference between you and the Gentiles, as God calls a foolish nation, foolish people. Those that are saved are not to be foolish, and yet many are still. Ephesians 2, 11 to 13, Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, you were lost. You were those Gentiles who are called uncircumcised by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hand. There was none of this Greek between men. Israelites were circumcised. Gentiles were not circumcised. So when you read in your Bible and you say that of the circumcision, you're reading about the Jews. A covenant given to Abraham, passed on to Isaac, given to Jacob, to the twelve tribes. And those that are not circumcised, I mean, I may say the uncircumcision of the Jews. The Jews were circumcised, the uncircumcision were the Gentiles. That at that time ye were without Christ. Before ye came to Christ, as a Gentile, you were uncircumcised, you were without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Notice the word alien. Alienated aliens. You were not of the Jews. So the Jews, the children of Israel, the nation of Israel in the Old Testament was the nation to be of all nations. And there was no America. I know I got to throw those in there. That the entire world, they wanted to get right with God. Anywhere in the world, they would have to go to a place called Jerusalem, where there was a temple. Now listen to me, because I'm going to quote something that is quoted among Christians, and you got to be careful. Where you are the light, a city, a light on the hill. Jerusalem is on the hill, it's a mountain. That temple was gold, overlaid with pure gold. It sparkled. And if any one were to seek out Jehovah, the God of all gods, they would have to go to that mountain, seek that Jew, and learn of the law what they must do to be right with God. The Bible says they could bring the strangers in. Strangers could partake of the Passover if they were to do what the law prescribed. And up to the time that you do get saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're under the law. And you can't fulfill the law. Now when you come to Christ and you're saved, you are, the law is gone, you are under grace. It says, strangers for the covenant of the promise. There was no covenants to the Gentiles. The foolish nation. Having no hope. And without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You are no longer a Gentile. You are no longer to be foolish. 
You're to grab hold of the scriptures. You're to study to show thyself approved unto God to rise above the Gentile. To rise above the foolishness. Galatians 4, 8 through 9. How be it then, when ye knew not God, foolish, how can you look around and not say that God is involved in the creation work? How can you not look at a human being with how he's put together? That the human needs air. It needs water. It needs food. And the air must come out. And the water must come out. And the food must come out. And yet God the Creator has provided means for all six of those functions. Imagine if you were to take a breath in and not able to, to release it, you'd die. Imagine if you have to take water, which we do, and there's no way to relieve yourself, you, you'd die. And if you were to take food and no way to get rid of that food, you'd die. When we look around at the creatures, when we look at the animals, when we look at everything that's on this earth, how it's made, what it does, what the function is, what the color is. And when we look at it as it ain't no God. You have not known God. Listen, about the man in Africa, if he looks up to those skies and worships the great whoever that is that made it all and made me and my tribe he has known God by his conscience an atheist will read later on is a fool the fool has said in his heart there is no God anybody who professes not to know God have not known God they're foolish whether Jew or Greek or rather are known of God. And the question comes down to. Does God know who you are? Well this person is not that person. Well I, I do this. God. No it's not that God. Does the God Jehovah of the Bible. Of the Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Does he know who you are? If not, you're foolish. A man that carries the name Christian. Now you got to be careful with the word Christian. Because that word is just thrown about. The true Christian that we're called in Antioch. Where our Bible came from. Is a person that has received the testimony by belief through his heart. Of the finished merit of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's a Christian. It's not an organization where, you know, Big Papa John, or whatever you want to call his name this, this year. And not to be known of God, not to know God, you're a Gentile, you're a foolish nation. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. And like I said, the church was trying to go back into the law. So we see a nation void of God and void of understanding God. When you look at the Romans and the Greeks, they had all kinds of gods. When you look at the Egyptians, they had a god for everything, including Pharaoh. When you look at the, um, the Ninevites, the Assyrians, your Easter egg god is their god of war. And when it comes to the Assyrians of war, they were vicious and cruel to the enemy. That's Esther, or Easter, Easter, the same one found in the book of Acts that people can't 
figure out why is there Easter and why is there Passover. The great Romans, the great Greeks, the great Native Americans, the great Babylonians, the great Africans, the great Americans that are so spoken about in our public school system. God says, unless you know Jesus Christ, you're foolish. You're a foolish nation. And America is a foolish nation because she does not know Jesus Christ. If she did, she wouldn't allow the other religions to practice what they practice. Romans 11, 7-12. What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election has obtained it. And the rest were blinded. As according as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears they should not hear. That's what Israel is in today. Because they had crucified their Messiah, they had rejected the, the apostles going out preaching the Messiah, preaching the gospel. They have rejected and even given them a hard time and even killing the apostles and giving the church a hard time. And persecuting Christians, God's like, okay, fine. Tell you what, I'll put your nation up on the shelf up there. I'm not done with you. I'll just put you up on the shelf and I'll bring down from the top shelf, I'll bring down this foolish nation called Gentiles and I'll let them hear about Jesus Christ. I'll let them hear about your Messiah and let's see if they will receive him or not. And now that they are receiving the Messiah that is yours, you guys just go ahead and get angry as much. And if you as an individual do not receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, I don't care how much of a good nation you are as an individual, I will put you into the burning hell that will burn forever. And that dead dog, that Christian, that you know, that who Jonah didn't want to have anything to do with, with Peter didn't want to have anything to do with, if they receive Christ, your Messiah, as their personal Savior with, with his blood to wash away their sins, I'll let him into my glory. I'll let him to a place called New Jerusalem. How's that? Now that will not anger a Jew. I am not saying that God's not finished with the Jews. I'll never say that. He is not done with them. They are still his people, but they're just... It's an individual account right now. What will an individual Jew do with Jesus Christ? Now once the church is gone in the rapture, then God will deal with those Jews as a corporate, as a nation again. But right now, it's all individual. What I do, what this person does, what that person does. No matter if they're American, no matter if they're Greek, no matter if they're Polish, no matter if they're Jewish, no matter what they are. But as far as Israel, unto this day. And David said, their king, let their table be a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense upon them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see. That's them today. And bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. For to provoke them, the Jews, to jealousy. You know what God's love is doing for an individual Jew? If they can do it, why can't you? I know there's Gentiles right now, four or five of them. There may be more. They're right now in the streets of Jerusalem. Maybe not, not this moment, but they are today. And yesterday, I know. They are preaching to those Jews at the, re, at, the, at the weeping wall, at the gates of the city. They are preaching in the Jewish city of Jerusalem to the Jewish people, Gentiles. About Jesus Christ, their Messiah, for them to get saved. What a reverse. God sent a Jewish prophet into Nineveh. God sent Peter to go to an Italian. They rejected Jesus Christ. Is God all finished with them? Why would God send Gentiles with the gospel to his people if he's all finished with them? Now, I'm telling you right now, most of them are rejecting their words of the gospel. Most of them are rejecting Jesus Christ. It's not good. But hey, that one Jew, if he comes out and says, listen, I, I believe what you're saying. I will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God will definitely save that soul. 
If a Gentile came out of Jerusalem, listening to them were to get saved, they would get saved. But we are foolish. We are dead dogs. We are junk to the nation of Israel. We are foolish. All the things we do, make, and they look at us, well, you're, you're fool. You eat that food? Ew, you guys. We don't eat that stuff. You worship those gods? Your gods have sex among the gods and produce children. You got half god children and and half gods who are human, half god. You 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 got all this mess. We've got one god and only one god, and we've got a god that's taken us out from the enemy. We've got a god that's delivered from you guys, the Egyptians, from the Syrians, from the all the people that's been against us, except for Rome right now. But God will take care of that. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the word, world, and the diminishing of them that riches of the Gentiles, how mu much more their fullness? Romans 9, 25-33, As he saith also in Osea, Joshua, Joshua, the succeeder of Moses. Do you know what Joshua means? It means Jehovah saves. Do you know what Jesus means? Jehovah saves. Out with the law of Moses and in with Joshua. Out with the law comes grace through Jesus. I will call them my people, which were not my people. Me. I am not a Jew. Well, I don't think I don't think I have any Jewish blood in me. The Hayward name, I don't know, but as far as I know, I don't have no Jewish blood or anything inside of me. And yet, by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the gospel of Jesus Christ, by the testimony and the finished work of the merit of Jesus Christ, God looks at me and says, He's mine. He's my son. A Jew would look at me and say, That 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 worthless Gentile who worshiped Mary and the Pope and idolatry and uh, incense and Christmas and Easter as a Roman Catholic. That guy is foolish and God says he's mine. I'm not foolish in the eyes of God by being of Christ. And yet there are people who are of Christ and they they live foolishly. They do the ways of the Gentile. They care about the football and the players bowing down. They give in to, oh, my guns. And they give in to the flag. They don't give in to the word of God or Jesus Christ or the gospel. But they'll do other things the Gentiles care about. Which were not my people. And her beloved, which is not beloved. I'm beloved of God by Jesus Christ. Before 1987, I was not beloved of God. It shall come to pass that in the turn page. In the place where it, sh where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall it be called the children of the living God. That's me. Isaiah is also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a raiment shall be saved, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth, and as Elias said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we have been as Sodom and been made like Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. I, see, I was unrighteous. The Babylonians were unrighteous. The Egyptians were unrighteous. But attend to the righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which follow after the law of righteousness, 
with, has not attained to the law of right. They're not doing what the law. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone, which is Jesus Christ, as is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. So when you bring Jesus Christ to a Jew today and he stumbles and he won't listen and he won't give his eyes to it, the Bible says, now you're foolish. You did have those dead dogs foolish. But there are those dead dogs who are saved now by Jesus and they're my children. They're no longer foolish. Now you're the foolish nation for not believing. 1 Corinthians 12 2. Ye know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols. That means idols that were unable to talk. That doesn't mean, duh, what do I do? Throughout the Bible, dumb means unable to speak and possibly too, unable to hear. You see, the gods of the Gentiles couldn't talk to you. Walk up to any statue and start asking questions and see if they'll give you an answer. Even as you were led, you were led by those stupid idols. But now the Corinthians, they have turned to Jesus Christ and they're saved. So there are groups of people in the world, past, present, and yet to come, as nations, they are foolish because they do not know the God of the Bible. Now there are saved Christians in America. There are saved Christians in England. There are saved Christians in Africa. There, but majority of the group of the populations are not saved and they're fools. And what separates you from the foolishness of them nations is you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's try one more. Number five, 1 Samuel 13, 13, rebellion. 13, the Bible's rebellion. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. God told Saul something. King Saul did not do it, and that's it. This kingdom's gone. 1 Samuel 13, 8 through 10. King Saul, who was a king and prophet, entered into the position he was not called to, the priesthood. He offered sacrifices, but he's a king. He's also a prophet, but he's not a priest. There were three offices in the nation of Israel. Prophet, king, and priest. The priests were of the Levi, the children of Levi, that of Aaron. All priests were Levites, but not all Levites were priests. And yet Samuel was part of the priest's office. I forget which tribe he was of. King David entered the office of the, the priest, but he was Judah. Prophet, that could have been any tribe. King, had to be of Judah. I know the northern Israel, they had their own, but they weren't right in God. And they went into captivity for it. So, God told Saul many things, and he didn't obey. And Saul entered into the priesthood. Saul offered sacrifices to God, and it is not the king's job, nor anybody but the priest's. Leviticus 17, 1-9. So the foolishness here is doing something like Saul was not to do. Whereas God had prescribed a way for his offering. Now, what's foolishness that for today? I can mumble, jumble, whatever you do, and call it tongues. That is not prescribed for a Christian. That is not prescribed in the church age. Tongues are for a sign to the Jews. So anybody who does that is a fool. They're doing foolishly. Like we just read. Be healed. 
send me your letters and your prayers and your four hundred dollars and and we'll heal you. We'll anoint you with oil over the airways. Healing as a sign is not of the church age. It's a sign for the Jews. I believe in healing. I believe in the Spanish tongues. My daughter's trying to learn Spanish. And to me, that would be tongues that I wouldn't be able to understand what she's learning. I understand that my family, my grandpa, spoke English and Polish. My great-grandparents spoke Polish, which would be tongues for me. But they weren't doing it for a church movement. They weren't doing it as a religious ceremony. That's what they were. You see, there are Christians and there are people today in the church age that are doing things in the name of God which are not prescribed by God, and he calls it foolishness. There are women preachers in the pulpits, and the Bible says a woman not to assert the authority over the man. That is foolishly. There are people saying, well, you're not supposed to get married. That is foolishly. And then enter into the office of the church. That is foolishly. The Bible condones adultery and yet television and the movies and the theater promote it. And when you do that, that's foolishly. Foolishly here is when God says and you don't do. And when God doesn't say, you do. When God says, thou shalt not, and you do, that's foolishly. And when God says, yeah, this is abomination, and you do it, that's foolishly. The act of even saying sodomy today, if God loves the sodomites, God loves the sinner, and uh, it's foolishly. Because God said those were abominations. Last one. 1 Samuel 26, 21. Then said Saul, here comes Saul again, I have sinned, returned my son David, for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thy eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool, and have erred exceedingly. Saul, again, he, he's constantly attacking David without cause. Okay? Most of David's life is being overrun by King Saul. And David had never done anything wrong to him, Jesus Christ. Man, for Jesus, if it wasn't the Sadducees, it was the Pharisees. If it wasn't the Pharisees, it was the scribes. It's almost like tag team. All right, Pharisees, he put you to shame. Okay, Sadducees, step in. And boom. And they get put to shame. Okay, scribes, step in. And David has that same problem with King Saul, one man. And later on, he's going to have a problem with his children. And yet, this is a confession is useless. Because he will still go after David. He will continue after this verse to chase David. He is knowledge before David and God that is he's vicious, he's envy, like the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes, according to the mouth of Pilate, and his uncalled for acts of foolish. What Saul, I mean, what Saul has come to the knowledge here is how I treated David is foolish, which is true. But the confession. It's not heart. It's just a mouth. And yet he was so close by confessing that sin of being a fool to David. And yet he doesn't get right. 
And you got to understand, if you got somebody who's going to confess, hey, listen, I may get done with this study. I may be half of the study. I may be only six through right now. There may be someone out there, yeah, I'm the fool. Wow, that's a great study. I'm learning a lot. So what are you doing about your foolishness? I'm going to go right back to it. Really? Are you going to try to fight doing right? No. Then you're still a fool. If there's true repentance, repentance would be, hey, I don't want to do that no more. And if I'm going to do it, it's going to catch me off guard or I'm going to fight. You know? We've got a confession of sin, but there's no change of heart when he goes right back out and does it all over again. And there are some foolish or fool prayers out there. I said this prayer. And there's a 50-50 chance that you are not saved, though you said the prayer. Did it come from the heart? For with the heart, man believes on the righteousness. Saul's heart was not right when he said that. And he's still a fool. His conscience is speaking. It, what I've done to you, David, it, 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 I'm, I'm a fool. But with my heart, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing it. Not going to stop me.